for the past few days, I have been enjoying the sunshine out there. Lovely day. You can see the butterflies, colorful butterflies, hopping from flower to flower. Birds singing in the air, all going together. Some of them even coming to my garden for a little feed. I love watching them. You know why all this is happening now? Because there is no pollution in the air. The cars are all at home. They are not on the road, not so many. So there is no pollution around and when the pollution is not there, the nature comes out. We, the human beings, have spoiled their nature. Which is not right. Well, our lesson today is about that. So the value is non-violence, not hurting others, not hurting nature. And the topic is values we learn from animals. But before that, let's have our usual silent sitting. And you know, for silent sitting, we need to sit straight and start with watching our breathing. So I want you to keep watching your breathing and when you feel like, slowly close your eyes. I'm going to do it as well. As I speak, I want you to imagine all that because when you do that, you will feel very relaxed. And I want you to do this silent sitting every day. So shall we start? Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Breathe in. Breathe in, breathe out. Gently close your eyes. Imagine there is a light in front of you. Take this beautiful light to your forehead, into your brain. I will think of good things. Then take this light to your eyes. I will see good things. Take this light to your ears. I will hear good things. This light to your lips. I will speak kindly, speak good things. Take this light to your hands. I will do good things. I'll help someone. Take this light to the most important people in your lives. Your parents, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, your brothers, sisters, and all the members in your family. Imagine them there. Imagine you sending light to all of them so they are happy and they are healthy and they are safe. Take this light to your neighbors now. People on your street. People in your town. People in your country. 
and the whole wide world. Let there be peace in the world. Take it to the universe. Far and wide. As far as you can go. Now gently think you are in a beautiful garden. The garden has got a lot of flowers. And you can see the butterflies hopping from one. You are there with your family. Giggling, laughing. You're watching the birds now. The birds hopping in front of you. Maybe you're feeding the birds and the birds are coming near you. They are not afraid of you. Imagine they are rabbits hopping from place to place. Beautiful butterflies. Now all these happy thoughts now, bring them with you and bring them and put them in your heart. Put this happiness in your heart so you can share with others. And when you are ready, very, very slowly, there's no need to hurry, gently, 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 gently smile, smile at the person next to you and gently open your eyes. Enjoyed it? Lovely, isn't it? I love it. And it's very good for our brain. It's very good for us. It's very good for our happiness. Talking about happiness, I'm going to tell you a funny story today. A very short story, but a funny story. Far away in China, there was a man, there is, old man, he used to make hats and sell hats. That's my hat. I don't know if he made it. So he used to make hats and sell them. It was hard work. He had to go all the way to other town. He used to get tired. And one day, he was carrying all his hats in a bag, two bags, one on this side, one on this side. He was wearing one as well. He sat under an apple tree to have his lunch. So he put the hats down there and he started eating, eating his lunch. Oh, he ate too much. So he was feeling sleepy. So when he had eaten now, he went back to sleep. And he was in the dreamland. He was sleeping. 
and while he was sleeping he didn't know that he didn't notice that but the apple tree under where, where he was sitting was sleeping there were some monkeys up there you guess what happened all the monkeys came down slowly picked the hat and went away went up there there one of the monkeys crazy oh he is just thinking ah there is one so that was a different hat so all the monkeys were wearing hats and when he woke up he looked around he couldn't find his hats so he thought what shall i do and then he looked up he saw all the monkeys looking at him wearing hats like him so he did uh, and they did uh, he did and they did the same he did uh, and the monkey started doing you know monkeys are very good at imitating they say human beings long millions of years before that were monkeys before that's what i heard the science said and if you look at a monkey very closely you will find he does lot of things what the human beings do so this man he thought how shall i get my hats back and this is what he did he took his hat and he threw it on the floor and when he threw it on the floor all the monkeys threw their hats on the floor because they were imitating him and he gathered all the hats and went away this is the story i heard when i was a little boy but wait there is something else to it there is something else to it and that's the funny bit lots of years later this man's son's son grandson grandson he followed the same tradition so he had told his grandson this story what happened and they all used to laugh whenever he used to always the grandson used to say grandpa tell me the story of the monkeys and the hat and he would start telling them the story of the monkeys and the hat so years later his grandson started selling the hats and while he was selling the hats he came to the same tree and he had his lunch and he went to sleep as well and when he went to went to sleep all the monkeys came and took his hats so he looked at them and he said ardi 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 and the monkeys did ardi 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 he did and the monkeys did the same he tapped his head the monkeys did the same and he took his hat and threw it down now what happened one of the monkeys came and took that hat as well and he thought what i thought the monkeys were going to going to throw the hats why did they throw the hats and one of the monkeys came to him and he said do you think only you have a grandfather we also have a grandfather and our grandfather told this story to us so we are not going to make that same mistake again <laughs> well this is a funny story but what i was trying to say is basically that the monkeys imitate human beings they are clever don't think only you are clever monkeys are clever too 
They can do lots of things. But we don't value them. We don't value human life. And that's why today I especially want to talk about this. So, our poster here, which you can download, is this values in animals so what we are going to do today is we are going to look at each animal and think in our mind what we get from that animal what can we learn from that animal and you'll be quite surprised so let's start with our first one Not me, it's this cat. Meow. Yeah, it's me. Cat. We all like pussies, all like cats. We like cats in the house. Many people have pets as cats. And we all like playing with them. My neighbor has got two cats. I used to have a cat when I was a little boy. Very, very small. And the cat was called Tiptoes. That was her name. Because there was a very nice story called Tiptoes about a cat. I can, I can still remember. How many years ago was that? Ah, I think 60 years ago. <gasps> 60 years ago, yes. I'm 70 now, so I was a 10 years old boy. But I learned from the cats that all the time the cats lick themselves. Do you, do you know why? Because they want to be clean. They, they like cleanliness. So the cats teach us to be clean, good hygiene, cut our nails properly, have a bath daily, brush our teeth properly, comb over hair, wear good clothes. And we need to be clean, not only clean outside, clean inside as well. Which means having good values. Meow. So, that's what we learn from the cats. Then we have the next animal. I had an animal. I had a dog. His name was Suki. And my daughters can tell you, we all used to love Suki. And my granddaughters used to love playing with Suki. And this Suki, this dog or the dog gave us a lot of enjoyment because we liked playing with them. We would throw a ball and, and say fetch or throw a stick, they'll go fetch it and come back. They will, do you think all these animals and do you think they can understand our language? Yes, they can. Because I know somebody's dog and I've seen a lady just saying to the dog, Ayow, come here. And the dog would come, sit down. The dog would sit. God, you can teach the dog to do so many things. They can, they will listen to you. They are very faithful to you. They say, there is a saying, as faithful as a dog. Even if you kick the dog, the master, even then the dog will not leave, leave you. I, I, we shouldn't kick the dog. That's just an example. So dogs are very faithful animals. So from dog, we learn how to be faithful. So you should be faithful. You should have faithful friends. You should be faithful to your friends. Don't desert your friends. When you have some other friends and then you leave other friends. I see children doing that all the time. 
That's not right at all. A friend is a friend. You can't leave one friend and go to another friend. So make sure that you're friendly with everybody, faithful to everybody, just like the dogs. We learn from them. Then we go to the next one. Ants. I know you don't like ants. Many of you don't like ants because they bite you. Yes, they'll bite you if you go near them. But what do we learn from these ants? I'll tell you. Next time, those little ants, watch them. They go in a line. And they go where there is sugar. And then you see some others coming the other way back. And they, you will see them meeting each other. You know what they are doing? They are telling the others. Go, there is sugar there. Go, there is sugar there. So you'll, uh, uh, an ant will come and will meet this one. And will say. Mm. I, I used to watch them many times. And that's what I learned from them. They learn sharing. Human beings sometimes don't share. I don't want to share my pencil case. I don't want to give. No. Learn from the ants. They're so small. See, these animals are so small. We are so big. But still, they teach us a lesson. So the ants teach us to share with others. So I think that's a very, very good value sharing. Thank you, ants. Now, next one is ah, ah. You see, when a lion roars, everybody gets frightened. They say a lion is a king of the forest. Because lions are very brave. So they teach us bravery. So children, I want you to be brave. If you can't do something, try it. Be brave. Many of the good values children are very brave now. They can come in front of a mic and speak. Before when they used to come, they were very, very shy. But now they are not shy anymore. They are brave. I call them brave children. You can also become brave. Be brave. Don't feel shy. Don't feel shy. Many parents tell me sometimes, my child is very shy. No, no, no. Say, I'm not shy. I can speak. I can do. And speak for yourself. Be brave. Do brave things. That's how you learn. You learn by falling and then standing up again. That's how we learn. So, a lion teaches us how to be brave. Let's look at the next animal. An elephant. An elephant. I know we have seen many elephants in India where people ride them and sometimes they're used in wedding processions and other things. But in some countries, these animals, these, these elephants are used to pull logs off trees. Heavy, heavy things. They pull heavy things. And they are a symbol of strength, strong, strong strength. And to be strong, you have to eat healthy food. Food that your mom gives you, the pulses, the chapatis, the vegetables or whatever food your mom cooks. Because I'm sure, rather than eating too much junk food, eat healthy and be strong like an elephant. And you children should drink glass of milk every day. Strong. Strength. So from elephants, we learn how to be strong.
Next, we have mm, mm, what's that humming sound? Oh, that's humming of the bees. Look at this poster. See what the bees are doing. They're going from flower to flower and picking nectar and then going into the hive and then from then we get honey from the hives you know children it makes me think that to fill a jar of honey how how much nectar can they pick from a flower small bee how much? That's the dot. And then go put it there, come back, put it there, come back, put it there. Not one thousand of them, busy, very, very busy, collecting nectar, taking it to the high. Collecting nectar, taking it to the high. They keep themselves busy. They don't say, oh, we want to watch TV, I'm tired now. No. They are busy all the time. From morning till evening and giving us sweet honey. Shouldn't we be thankful to them? Have we ever thanked the bees and said, bees, thank you for the lovely honey you give us? Saying that, have we ever thanked the nature, giving you things, giving you rain, giving you sunshine, giving you food? Your food is not coming from the supermarket, no. It comes from the farms from the sun. We should thank the sun. Photosynthesis. Those who are older, you know that. So, from the bees, we learn being busy and also we learn to be organized. They have different bees doing different work. Teamwork. Yes, that's the word. Teamwork. They all act as a team. So, thank you bees for the sweet honey. Oh, the next one. I am feeling a bit tired. You know why I'm feeling tired? Thinking of the next animal. Just thinking of the next animal is making me tired. Because I'm imagining a donkey. How much hard work a donkey does. How much weight a donkey carries. Have you ever seen it? Next time, when you watch any video, see it for yourself. The poor donkeys work hard day in, day night. And when they can't lift them, uh, weight is too heavy for them. The master hits them with a stick. Oh, so the donkeys work really, really hard. They show us the value of hard work. So thank you to the donkey for carrying all the weed, all the work that they do for all the people in this world. We need them because people have to do some work. But I think we should be kind to them as well. Then, the next one is the dolphins. Have you ever watched the dolphins? They say the dolphins are very good and they're used as therapies to calm the people. We learn things about calming from the dolphins. Because they make people very happy. So, you know, dolphins give us the calmness, tells us we should talk less, we should listen more. That's what we learn from the dolphins, the nice little dolphins. Right? 
flying from the water, jumping like that, jumping like that. It's so fun just to see them jumping. Thank you, dolphins. And finally, you want to know which animal it is? Cock-a-doodle-doo, cock-a-doodle-doo. Wake up, wake up, you lazy man. Wake up. It is time, it's early morning. In the days when there was no watches, there was no alarm clock. That was the alarm clock, early in the morning. Waking people up. It's teaching us the value of waking up early and not wasting time. Early to bed, early to rise, makes a child healthy, wealthy, and wise. So, go to bed early, wake up early, feel fresh, don't be lazy, don't lie in bed too long. No, no, early to bed. That's what we learned from the cockroach. So, Today we have learned lots of things from, these are just few of the animals. These are just very few. There are lots of other animals teaching us lots of other things. Perhaps you can try and find out about other animals and what they teach you. And let me know. So our contact is goodvaluesclub at gmail.com. You can always ask your mom and dad to send me a message of any new ideas, of any new animals and what things they do. So, we have had a quote of the core quotation, the values and animals, we have had a story, we have had silent sitting. Now the time for the activities. I've got a few activities, two activities rather for you. Right, the first one is, you can download this poster. By the way, children, just to let you know, because I found out some people didn't know, that when you click on the video in the Good Values Club YouTube channel, down at the bottom, it's called a Dropbox, something called a Dropbox. When you click on the Dropbox, you can get all these activities there. So you can do the activities at home. So next time click there because last week I had to tell a few children that there is a drop box. So you print two of these and cut them out, the cards. Then place the cards face down on the ground, on the table, wherever you want. Now, this activity, my grand grandchild Shreya, she suggested to me the other day, why don't we do a matching card activity? I said, okay, I'll do one. So you have to find two same ones, the same. So you have to find the same and you can keep them and then you go on doing like that. Maybe you can time each other. That who can pick the cards or who can pick more cards or how, if you want the one person to do it, how long it takes you to find the cards. So you pick one card, look at the dog, put it back. Don't change the place. Put it. So that's one activity. The next activity is Right. There are nine animals which we had and you are going to get nine sheets. So all that I have taught to you today, I want you to remember it and then 
For example, the cat, as clean as a cat. So, we talked about cleanliness, we talked about brushing teeth, everything. You can draw those things here if you like. And then you can color the cat or you can decorate the cat. As clean as the cat. As faithful as a dog. So you can, you can think of all these things. And so dog, faithful, when have you been very faithful to your friends? How you have supported them? Draw them, write their names. Sharing, what things have you shared? When, how did the other person feel? How did you feel when you were sharing them? So you can draw, you know, holy, lots of things you can do now in your spare time. So you can't say I'm, it's boring while we have all this. As brave as a lion. When have you been brave? What did you, things did you do? Were you brave learning to ride your bike or something else? Think of it. Talk to your parents. They will tell you. Strong. How have you, be, how are you becoming strong? And busy. What do you do to keep yourself busy? Busy as a bee. What do you do to keep yourself busy? What fruitful things do you do? Then, hard work. What hard work have you been doing? Learning spellings? Could be. Learning timetables? What things do you find hard? But you are still doing it. So that. Calm. What do you do for being calm? I bet many of you will do silent sitting. Will write silent sitting. There could be other things you, you would be doing. To be calm. And finally. What time do you wake up? Are you waking up early? If not, are you going to start waking up early? So maybe a suggestion here that I'll start waking up early. So, lot of work to do. So now, let's do the song. And this is the last time we are doing Never Tell a Lie song because I think next week we should have a new song. So we have quite a few songs we have learned now. So the song is Never Tell a Lie. Never Tell a Lie even if in fun, because if you tell a lie, the damage has been done. Then nobody believes in you. Even if you speak the truth and say it all the day. So, let's start the song. I think I'll have to go and start it over there. Even if in fun, have you told a lie? Damage has been done, and nobody believes in you. What do you mean? You may say, you speak the best truth, you say it all the day. So always say what's true, always say what's true. How will you?
never tell a lie, even if in fun, because if you tell a lie, the damage has been done. So children, I hope you liked today's lesson about nature and I enjoyed it and I will see you. Oh, before I go, a reminder again. Tell your friends about our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please do some activities. Take the pictures and email them to me. Goodvaluesclub at gmail.com. Ask your parents to email them to me, the activities. So that I can then put them on the Instagram or even show to others. So I hope you will have a lovely week. And the weather is lovely. Go out, enjoy the nature, and goodbye.